Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Grace to All with Paul Gray. You're in for a real treat today. My friend from across the pond uh, in London, England, Eamon McMullen is with us today. And Eamon uh, is an Irishman uh, by birth. He lives in London now. He uh, uh, works in the construction industry there, and he's a very prolific uh, YouTube uh, broadcaster and on Facebook. He has great, uh, great videos and teachings about grace. And uh, we connected, I'm not sure how, through a mutual friend somewhere. Uh, when I'm recording here today, it's right in the middle of the day, bright sunshine, but it's, uh, uh, it's five o'clock in England and it's, <laughs> it's been dark there for already an hour. Uh, so yeah. it, it's a little different halfway around the world, but Eamon, greetings. Thanks for being with us today. No, thank you for inviting me. I, uh, I, I appreciate it. No, I, I, I enjoy this. Uh, I'll enjoy this opportunity sharing about God's grace, God's love, God's power. And you do that so well on your videos, and I'm honored to have you with us. And well, Eamon, as, as we always do, I like to start out by asking my guest, uh, how has your understanding of God's grace and unconditional love for everyone, how's that uh, affected you where the rubber hits the road in your relationships with family and friends and co-workers and people that you relate to every day? Yeah, in my particular case, it's been a journey, uh, an unfolding, uh, kind of like a pulling back the curtains, uh, many curtains of my understanding. Uh, I became a believer uh, and I started to have why wonderful experiences with God about 30 years ago when I was about 19 or 20. I guess you can work out what age that means I am now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I had this passion for God as a young believer. And I had actually my, how I actually experienced God initially, my initial experience with God, with God was unconditional love. That's how I got uh, awakened to God or born again or whatever word you want to use, I became conscious that God was real and he was, he, he wanted to interact with me. I had this awesome experience with unconditional love. But at that time, as a, a very young believer, I didn't have much understanding, uh, but I was full of passion and desire, birth of the spirit within me to know God and to walk with God and to honor God. But like I said, I didn't have much understanding because I was a baby in Christ. Uh, and from that point, obviously, I went to church. And uh, But what happened was I kind of, in my enthusiasm and in, and in my zeal, I kind of got caught in the familiar trap of mixing law and grace and having an, an idea that God loved me and loves me. Uh, but he, if I do something wrong or if I mess up, he it could be really hard for me um so this was something that really affected me as a young believer ultimately although i was experiencing god's love and grace my understanding of that time was that it had something to do with what i was doing i had to you know shape up and maintain and although god loved me i needed to prove that i was worthy of his love and so this as a young believer, uh, I walked like this for quite a quite a while, and it uh, ultimately resulted in me being quite confused, and ultimately coming to the end of myself. This is my probably the first ten years of my walk as a believer, and uh, but after about ten years of being a, a believer, um, I ultimately came to the end of myself. I the whole lot, my whole sort of Christian belief and Christian faith and my whole faith in God sort of came crashing down. Although I believed in God and I knew God was real, uh, I no longer believed in myself or my ability to walk with God. Mm. Uh, that, that's probably the best way to put it. I no longer believed in myself mm. or my ability to actually perform and to, to please God. I thought, no, I just can't do it. I'm just not, there's something wrong with me. And at this very low point where I hit rock bottom, that's when God really opened my eyes to his unconditional love, his grace, in a, quite an explosive way. Uh, my heart and understanding, it's like 
I had, it's almost like, I'm not going to say a vision, but let's use that word vision. I had a, almost like a vision of Jesus, but not seeing Jesus like as a physical man, like a head and hair and body. It's almost like he allowed me to look inside himself. It's, it's, he allowed me inside his heart and I had a vision of what was contained within him or an experience with what was contained within him. And all I experienced was pure unconditional love and grace and pure goodness with not even a hint of malice or uh, anything bad towards me in relation to anything I'd done, good or bad. And when I had this, uh, my whole understanding of God's love and grace was totally transformed and revolutionized. And uh, I then understood that I start to have a true deep assurance that I was loved unconditionally and it was permanent. And God's grace was with me permanently. And it, he never backed off from me. He never withdrew his power or his goodness or his abundance uh, in relation to how I was performing in that particular moment or day. So this was something that happened to me around the year 2000, this understanding. And um, within a year of that, well, that kind of understanding gave me this, I would say, uh, Romans chapter five experience where I understood that where sin increases, grace increases all the more. That I was righteous completely without doing anything. It was something that God had just given me. And it was a permanent reality. Mm -hmm. And... So I, I had this understanding of this is what the good news was. Now, it related to me specifically. And I'm coming to your question, how does it relate to, how did it work out for other, me relating to other people? After having this initial experience in the year 2000, I was, I was so enthusiastic about what I discovered about the, the consistency of God's goodness in my life and the, the assurance I had in God's love, that I obviously started to really share this it's with a lot of people. And uh, what happened after, after about a year of that, after a year of this initial experience in the year 2000, I then had this understanding that this love extended to all people. It wasn't just if you believed. This grace was on all humanity and that ultimately God would and will restore all humanity into a, a living vital relationship with himself. And uh, uh, it kind of knocked in the head this idea that there is this eternal hell, this eternal place that people go to. That was completely knocked on the head. And uh, when I specifically got that aspect of it, that really helped me relate to people because no matter the condition I found people in or how they related to me, let's say they didn't like me or I didn't like them. <laughs> right? I knew there was hope and it somehow cleansed me of a sense of judging people, this bitter kind of judgment. And what I realized when I, I understood that God was going to restore all humanity, every human being, I understood that from that point that what I had received previously, this idea that God was conditional and there were certain people who believe are going to kind of make it to heaven. The rest are going to burn forever and be tormented forever. I understood that that had actually infected me with a, with a, a kind of a, a wrong kind of spirit in my consciousness that caused me to judge people. It's just automatic. You thought if someone's not a believer, you, you kind of think they're bad or there's something wrong with them and you try to force them to believe. And, uh, and that just doesn't work. You can't force anybody to do anything in relation to this kind of idea of preaching in, in an evangelical sense. So when I had this experience that when I had this understanding that God was actually going to restore all people, uh, into a vital living conscious relationship with himself. Uh, this really cleansed me and softened my heart towards everybody, uh, even people that I didn't like and maybe didn't like me. And uh, I just had a softer heart towards people. I knew there was hope for everybody. 
And even if they weren't able to receive at that moment what I was trying to communicate in terms of God's love and grace to them, and I am an evangelist. I, I, I share this message of God's love and grace with people in the street in the area. I, I know I make YouTube videos and that, but I actually talk to thousands of people in London on the street. I give out a letter that I produce that just talks about myself. But the point is, um, it softened my heart towards people, and I knew there was hope for everybody, uh, whether, whether or not they're believing. Obviously, ultimately, it's better to believe because then you can actually experience this vital relationship that is God is made available to us all. But if you're not believing at this moment, God's love remains, and uh, he, he has got you marked. And he somehow or in some way, his love is going to win. And uh, yeah, so it, it produced a softness in me towards people, I would say, uh, in the face of adversity or, so yeah. Great. Well, you know, it's, a, <clears throat> it's such a difference being able to tell people who they already are and that they're already loved and God's grace uh, <clears throat> already covers them forever than to uh, tell them the lie that uh, uh, that God hates them and they're going to hell and they're going to burn forever unless they say the magic yes. words or whatever. Uh, it, it, boy, it's yes. a total, totally different way to relate to people, isn't it? Yes, yes. Um, it, it just means that it, for me, mm. it meant that I, I could just totally relax with people and just be myself. And uh, and I can always look at everyone with a sense of hope and a, a sense of love. That's really what it meant for me, that, that there was no barrier uh, between me and them. Yeah. And that ultimately there, was, there wasn't actually any real difference between me and them. Right. Uh, um, no matter whether they're a Muslim or a Christian or... Mm -hmm or a Hindu, sure. uh, it's, the, it's the goodness and grace of God <laughs> that is living and vital that transforms a human heart. Mm -hmm. And the human heart is made for ex to experience, the human spirit is made to experience and interact with God's goodness, mm -hmm. God's supernatural, living, expressive goodness. And uh, once a a human comes or a person comes into contact with it, uh, they may put up res some resistance in their conscious awareness initially, but their spirit and their, the depth of their being is saying yes. <laughs> and I yeah. think that's probably what it means in Romans chapter eight, where it says the whole creation waits in eager expectation with outstretched necks yeah. for the manifestation of the sons of God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear a lot these days about manifestation and it's a it's a fascinating uh thing to start to grasp and um uh, i it, it, that that chapter that verse that you just mentioned is uh starting to open a lot of our eyes along that way <clears throat> once yes. you know i've i've interviewed <clears throat> A couple of hundred people now for my podcast as well as just talking to people uh in person and online and stuff like that and almost everyone says some version of what you just said amen that the the difference in uh what what we now know it takes all the pressure off yeah, we can relax yes. uh we, we don't have to feel like uh, we've got to get them to say the prayer the way we want them to say it we don't have to check <laughs> yes. them off a list uh, yeah. and uh of course when we relax then god's love uh, just flows through us to people and and uh they well, that's the, it yeah yeah when you you mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, uh when you came to the point when you realized that um I don't want to put words in your mouth but i, I think you said when you realized that there was no hell anymore how did how did that realization come to you? And did you did your consciousness did your mind fight that, or was it just an instant thing that you went, oh, wow, I get it now. Right. Um, personally, I was never really a great hell preacher myself, uh, ever. Uh, I, I did initially when I got came to Christ. Uh, I did have an experience with His unconditional love, and. Uh, 
you know, I always had a few questions in my mind, which I, I didn't fully think about at the time. I probably wasn't ready to think about them in terms of when, it, when you saw certain scriptures. One of the things I really discovered as a young believer was learning to be led by the Spirit and be counseled. And that's how I kind of approach things as a young believer in my particular case. The anointing teaches us all things, it says in 1 John. Uh, and Jesus talks about in John chapter 14, 15, and 16 that the Spirit, He will instruct you in everything. He will counsel you. He will lead you into all truth or all spiritual reality. I have much to say to you or much to impart to you, but too much right now, you're, you wouldn't be able to contain it. It's so wonderful. Uh, so I had this as a really good foundation as a believer, this idea that the Holy Spirit was going to teach me. So when I approached the Bible, even as a young believer, I always said, God, what does this mean? Um, and uh, when it, as a young believer, when I came to the sort of the hell scriptures, I didn't really seek God too strong on those things. Uh, I kind of just uh, kind of assumed that, it okay, this is what this means. There's hell forever for people. And, you know, and obviously the pastors and teachers are telling us there's hell for everybody if they don't believe. And so I kind of assumed and I didn't question it too much. But I, I looking back, I definitely had a kind of an inkling of a question in there. I wonder what this means. Uh, do, are we interpreting this correctly? It was always there. Are we interpreting this correctly? Uh, but I wasn't really seeking God in that particular area at that time. Uh, but when I had this experience, this revelation of God's grace uh, around the year 2000, where I really understood that I was completely righteous, that I was totally under grace. God's unconditional love and goodness were permanent. They, his power, the manifestation of his power and goodness working in me to make me as a manifest son of God was a continual thing. Uh, it's at that point where I, uh, I start to look up various pastors and teachers who had influenced me in the past uh, and just to see if they understood grace the way I understood it because I had such a rad radical understanding of grace at that time not not hell but just grace that I'd never heard anyone teach or preach grace the way I understood it right? mm -hmm. I never heard anyone preach grace like this but I seemed to understand this in a very radical way so I started looking up teachers who I'd come into contact with in the past who had a positive influence on my life to see if they understood this grace and one of those was Charles Slegel. I hadn't been in contact with him or been heard about him for probably years five or six years and uh, but anyway I looked him up on the internet around the year 2000 uh, 2001 just to see if he understood this grace that I was and lo and behold he was talking about God is going to reconcile all things I thought, my, I thought I understood grace. This guy's taking grace to a whole new level. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was, I thought I was on the cutting edge. He's gone off. He's, he's jumped off the cliff. Right? <laughs> so I obviously read what he said and it really only took one reading of it for me to, I thought, yeah, this makes total sense. I didn't really argue with it, to be honest with you. Right? I just accepted it and went, yeah, this is right. I then, uh, started to read stuff by Preston Eby and uh, his stuff in the candlestick to the throne. And there's one thing, Jesus, the savior of the world that Preston, J. Preston Eby wrote, which actually goes into explaining judgment and hell and the lake of fire in a sort of a scriptural sense and explaining what the words mean and Aeonius ages what brimstone is what hell in the bible actually is and that was super helpful in terms of understanding the scripture and uh, one of my things me personally is i do see some believers who do kind of get the revelation that about the non-existence of eternal hell but it is very good to understand what these scriptures mean in their correct context and not to just throw everything out because I have seen a lot of people sort of have this particular revelation, if you want, or this understanding, and then they threw everything away. And it's almost like they, you know, everything kind of goes, they kind of become a bit sort of angry at the church, uh, the past church. And uh, 
I don't really see it like that. I'm not angry at the past church or whatever. I just realize that everyone's kind of on a journey and uh, we, we're all going to get there in the end. <laughs> right? uh, some of us may go through kind of hell to get there. Right? Uh, I've certainly been through hell a few times. I'm the I've been in the belly of the whale a few times. <laughs> but, you know, I always get spit. I always get uh, vomited out on the shore yeah. in God's purpose and plan. <laughs> I, I heard someone say the other day, uh, uh, we all go through hell, but you want to keep on going. You don't want to, don't want to stay there. <laughs> right. right. Well, that's exactly, that would be it. Yeah. You want to, you want to keep moving, keep your eyes on him <laughs> Yeah. and his goodness and love and faith is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it is indeed. Eamon, we're, our time is, uh, our time is just about up and, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to stop this recording in a minute and then we'll do another one, which our, our listeners and viewers will hear a week later. Uh, but I've so enjoyed this and I, I'd like you to tell people how they can find your teaching, how they can connect with you uh, before we uh, end up this session. Okay. Well, you can connect with me on YouTube. Obviously I've made a lot of videos and uh, you just put my name into YouTube, which is Eamon McMullen. I'm, I'm sure uh, Paul will put my name in writing up on the screen. If you can't, don't know right. how you spell that. Eamon, right. E-A-M-O-N, uh, McMullen. And uh, you can connect with me on Facebook, obviously, my same name again. I've also started a website recently called uh, puregraceworld.com. Uh, it's in its initial stages. You'll maybe find something to read there or a few YouTube videos. It's not, it's not, it's a, it's a kind of a work in progress. Uh, with time permitting, uh, but probably in six months time, it'll look amazing. Uh, right now, it just looks like a few bits and pieces put together, but it's, there's something there to read and it will be ongoing, puregraceworld.com. Uh, Wonderful. That's it. Wonderful. Well, we're going to uh, we're going to finish up now, and but then uh, we'll be back uh, in a week for people to listen. So, Eamon, thank you so much for being here and for your message of pure grace, uh, which you're taking around the world. And I appreciate you being with us today. I very it's been a pleasure to talk to you guys. Thanks. And thanks, everybody, for joining us for this edition of Grace to All with Paul Gray. Uh, we'll see you next week with a, another interview with my friend Eamon McMullen. Grow in grace, everybody.